The Friday after Thanksgiving, I did what many people do that day, besides shop. I got some bins out of the basement and decorated my house for Christmas. I have several nativities that were given to me or I inherited from my family. My mother's favorite angels adorn my mantle, and a collection of Santas sits on top of a cupboard. Earlier that week, Myrna and I were here at church decorating the tree you see behind me. Now you can see that our church building is decorated for Christmas. But why do we decorate? You could say it makes us happy or stirs up the Christmas spirit. But I think the main reason is that decorating is invitational. It's about drawing in and including others. Is this a place of warmth and inclusion? If so, our environment should reflect that. And so lights and ornaments and trees have popped up in homes, church, and even our town. Isaiah even talks about decorating in chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. This is the New International Version. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Did you hear it? He talks about the people bestowing a crown of beauty, the oil of joy, and a garment of praise. And he even mentions trees displaying God's splendor. Isaiah was obviously prophesizing well before the birth of Christ and so not exactly talking about Christmas. The Hebrew people were in exile, and things looked extremely dark. But Isaiah refers to the people decorating themselves as a symbol of hope. But what good could this possibly do? Does decorating really make things better? When we decorate our homes and church, we aren't saying that we don't face difficulties. We're in a pandemic. Advent and Christmas are not the same as we are used to and not going to happen the way we would want them to. We aren't oblivious to this bad news, but we are making a choice to live by the good news, to live not in despair at our circumstances, but in joy for the ways God can bless us even today, and in hope for the way God is tending to our future. We aren't wearing rose-colored glasses. We aren't just hanging around waiting for something to happen. Listen to the first few verses of our scripture again. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. About 500 years later, Jesus will read these words in a synagogue in Nazareth and tell the people that he is fulfilling this prophecy. But doesn't Jesus call us to be him to our neighbors? Isn't this what he hopes for us? We are to be the ones to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for captives, to comfort those who mourn. And who hasn't been brokenhearted or poor in spirit or captive to the wrong things? 
who hasn't mourned and grieved, especially in this time of shutdowns and closures and illness and even death. This is a call for us to care for all people, to include all in our welcome underneath our Christmas tree that should beckon them forward by its beauty and light. We can do this work because we believe in the one who leads us, because our hope is in him. And because of this hope, we are not only a blessing, but we are also blessed. Hope has to do with seeing a reality in a new way, seeing beyond the current circumstances into a world that is different, better. The Gospel of John prevent, presents this kind of hope in chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. John the Baptist spent a lot of time baptizing people, but his ministry was actually about pointing to something greater. He was not the light, as we aren't the light, but he and us point to the light of Christ. And when we do, Christ's light shines through us. Hope has to do with seeing beyond, to a different, better reality. Take our Christmas tree behind me. It's decorated with ornaments that all point to a reality beyond. I have a few here. The bell stands for the sounding forth of the word of God. The Cairo is a monogram of the first two letters of the word Christ. The triangle and circle are a symbol of the eternity of the Trinity. These aren't just pretty things to decorate a tree. They point beyond themselves to a different, better reality. But let's look beyond again to the whole tree. Why is it covered with lights and chrismen? Well, it's the season to deck the halls. Isaiah did this with crowns and oil. John the Baptist did it with water. We do it with this beautiful tree. But all this decorating is just preparing our space, preparing our hearts, preparing our world by pointing beyond the decor so that our space and our hearts are ready to welcome all to the joy, peace, and inclusion of Christ. Let us pray. Glorious God, thank you that you decorate our lives with blessings, food for our tables, shelter for our heads, friends and families for our hearts, church for our souls. Advent for hope, and Christmas for joy. Help us use these gifts to welcome all into your fellowship. Give us strength to bind up the brokenhearted, compassion to comfort those who grieve, and wisdom to shine light on those living in darkness. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. People of God, Let's decorate our homes, our hearts, and our lives with gentleness, kindness, peace, and the love of Christ so that all feel welcome in the family of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.